Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I had so much fun with you guys doing the video over the Mandela effect where I didn't have a script and I just kind of talk to you guys like off the cusp you know and to have a conversation i didn't really deep dive too much into it just with what i knew and i, I i've read a lot of the comments i haven't had a chance to respond to all of them yet but i have been able to read some of them and i really really enjoy hearing y'all's perspective on some of these more complex and complicated theories. And so I decided maybe we should do some more of these because, um, you know, for me, I've said this before, I'm the type of person, I'm a very gray thinker. Like I don't really need to have a direct answer. Sometimes I I'm pretty good with just contemplation and seeing how things play out. And, you know, the more that we awaken to, the truth of the world and the truth of ourselves, the more discernment we have. And with more discernment comes more critical thinking skills. And with more critical thinking skills comes the ability to listen to different perspectives and consider different perspectives. As you guys know, if you've been on here for a while, one of my favorite quotes is from Aristotle, where he says, it's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it. And so there are some really big philosophical theories out there regarding the reality of our predicament, what we're in. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about some of these theories. Now, if you are somebody who tends to waver on the side of vig vigilanteism, then this might not be the conversation for you. I am not a, hu a supporter of any type of vigilante violence. I just don't think that serves any purposes and i think that makes us no better than the people that we're up against if that makes sense i think one of the biggest differences between us and them is that we have compassion and we have mercy and empathy and in being that in that position i think we're able to listen more and to react less if that makes sense so again if you're still in that area of anger where you want to do vigilante stuff, then maybe skip this video. But if you're willing to like have conversations about some of these bigger philosophies and theories, then stick around because I would I would love to hear your perspective. Now, I am going to try to do this video without my microphone. Again, if you watch the Rodrigo Borgia, or excuse me, the Cesare Borgia video I just released, I didn't, I used my microphone, but I didn't use my monitor because I wanted, I felt like for that episode, you really just needed to hear better than see. Um, and so I'm just kind of playing around with it because my monitor has been acting up. So I apologize if the sound quality is not as good as it normally is. We're still trying to figure it out. You know, technology is expensive. So we're trying to figure out the best way to, to work with some of the limitations um, of this channel. So let's get into it, you guys. Now, as you guys know, I am a huge fo follower of the law of one, the raw material, as well as the Cassiopeians. Um, and again, with these theories that are presented in the law of one and the Cassiopeians, as I talk about them, I'm talking about them through the lens of my own perspective. So I really, really, really encourage you guys. I am not the holder of truth. I am not the end all be all when it comes to truth. Just because I'm a researcher and just because I've spent most of my adult life studying philosophy and spirituality doesn't mean that I know everything at all. 
you know, theories are just opinions, right? That's all they really are. They're more founded opinions. There's more of study behind a theory, but it's still just an opinion. So I absolutely encourage you guys, as always, please, 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 please read the law of one for yourself. Follow the Cassiopeians for yourself. Again, I'm paraphrasing things that they've taught from my own perspective of what was said. So you might read the same thing and get something totally different from what I got out of it. So please, please, please do your own research as you know, you guys know. So you have your own discernment. So it's interesting. I was actually listening the other day. I was listening to Aquarius Rising Africa, my friend Shanti, because you guys know I go on her channel a couple times a week. We're, we're buddies. And she has Jesse Zaboder, another friend of mine. I know some of you guys are shocked to hear that. But yes, Jesse and I are actually friends. We communicate more offline than we do online. Just because we have different opinions on things doesn't mean we're not friends. It's crazy that we live in a world where people think in order to, for someone to be your friend, you have to have all the same opinions. No, 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 you guys. You can you can be friends with people who have different opinions. It's it's cool as long as your moral compass is the same. Opinions, schminions, who cares, right? So anyway, but I was listening to uh, the latest episode, one of the latest episodes with Shanti and Jesse, where they were talking about William and Kate, and it was so fascinating because Jesse was talking about. Um, Kate Middleton's coat of arms. And I actually messaged Shanti because I have a coat of arms. My mom's family has a coat of arms. And I was like, I would love for Jesse to look at my mom's family's coat of arms because I know I got some dubious, some, some shady characters in my family, in my history of my family. And it kind of brought about this topic, this theory that my boyfriend and I talk about a lot because it was brought up with the Cassiopeians. And the Cassiopeians are kind of a subsect of the Law of One. They use the template of the Law of One within their channeling. And as I've said before, uh, the Cassiopeians have been channeled for 30 years now and they haven't been wrong yet. And the person who channels the Cassiopeians uh, is actually my boyfriend's third cousin, Laura Knight, and she is very well educated, very well trained when it comes to channeling. You can't just channel, you actually need a teacher, you need structure, you need to understand what you're doing because when you do stuff like that, you are opening the door for anything to come through. And so I absolutely trust Laura Knight. She's done her work. And so, and again, the Cassiopeians have yet to be wrong. And they, they don't, the Cassiopeians don't like the wall, law of one, they don't infringe on our free will. In fact, sometimes they're so vague in their answers because they don't want to infringe on our free will. They need us to be here and to make decisions for ourselves based on our own discernment, not what somebody else told us to do. So there is, you know, when I was listening to Jesse talk about Kate's coat of arms and these families, it made me think about, again, this topic that this theory that is brought about with the Cassiopeians regarding our ancestral lineage. Now we know, you know, when you are born into a family, we know genetically we we inherit from our parents. We look like our parents. We um, sometimes inherit diseases from our parents. Um, we sometimes inherit personality traits from our parents. Now, when we look at genetics, now again, the soul and the body are two different things. Like this goes back into the yoga theory that we've spoken about a lot, the Prakriti and the Purusha, the Shiva, the Shakti. So the body is an in, it's, it's, it's mortal. It's a mortal experience. Why the soul is immortal. The soul is connected to your consciousness. And as I, I've used the example before, like when you go into an amusement park per se, and you're going to ride a roller coaster you pick a roller coaster because you want a simulated experience on that roller coaster. You want your nervous system to experience some sort of adrenaline or something. And for every person, that's going to be different what they're looking for out of that experience. But when you're in the roller coaster ride, you know it's just a ride. right? It's not permanent. But there's some simulation you're getting. Well, that's all the lives that we're living, right? So every time we incarnate into a body... We're picking a particular family, a particular DNA structure for a simulated experience so our soul can refine itself. Now, the problem with third density, or actually it's not the problem, it's kind of the point of third density, is that when we come into third density, we forget that we're a soul. And part of that agreement to go through amnesia is to suffer the consequences, the friction of believing 
who we physically are is who we permanently are. And this is what the yoga sutras are about, right? They talk about the, um, you know, man's condition, man's suffering, man's, the human condition is because who man thinks man is, is not who man really is. And it's only through that suffering and through that friction of being in a body that's not mortal, that we can face that and through that friction, refine our soul and refine the fact that we actually are immortal. And part of that spiritual practice is being in the humanity of it all, to be in the nervous system, to experience empathy and, and um, fear and love and learn how to ride the waves of that so our soul can refine itself. Yeah. I always say it's like this, you know, you have a match and if you hold a match, a match has everything in it. It needs to light ex itself, but it cannot light itself unless it's struck up against the matchbook. That's friction. So you coming, your soul coming into human experience is you rubbing up against that matchbook in order to learn from learn the wisdom from being on this third density. Now, of course, according to the law of one, the whole point of third density is choice. You're either picking the side of the light or the side of the darkness. Third density is polarity. So there's always going to be a left and a right, a yin and a yang, a male and a female, light and dark. And that polarity, again, causes discomfort, causes friction, and causes an opposing force, an opposing force. And so through that opposing force, you then have experiences that shape you and lead you to making certain choices that are going to dictate whether you go to the light or to the dark. I hope that makes sense. So with that being said, when we're looking at what's happening right now on our planet and according to everything i've researched according to the law of one and cassiopeians planet earth is one of the more intense third density planets it's it's like we take our darkness to the extreme but however we take our darkness to the extreme there's just that much light as well because it has to be a balance right because we're in polarity so as much darkness as there is there is that much light too so it's also one of the most beautiful planets to be on so as a soul is planning to come to a particular planet, let's say you're coming to Earth, the soul is going to sit down with its guides and figure out certain lessons it's going to learn. Even if you're a wanderer, which is a higher density soul, you're still going to be like, you know what, while I'm down there, I might as well learn some more lessons. So let's let's figure out a syllabus. And they laugh and say sometimes for when we're in soul form, we see these lives as being so short that we try to pack a bunch of stuff in and sometimes our guides have to be like, you know what, let's take some of that stuff off the list because once you get down there, it's not going to feel short. So let's take some of that stuff off. You know, <laughs> you don't need to get mugged five times. Let's take a few of those off. You know, so so when our soul is planning to come back to Earth, what it's doing is it's looking for, again, the lessons that it needs to learn to refine itself while being here. And so part of that, but depending on the lessons it needs to learn, the karma it needs to face is figuring out the body, the vehicle, the ride that's going to grant them an opportunity to have those experiences. Does that make sense? So like if I'm going to go up and travel and transverse the Rocky Mountains or Appalachian Mountains, I'm not going to do it in a city car. I'm not going to do it on those low-level Porsches that just zips around. I'm going to get a four-wheel drive. I'm going to get a truck, a sports utility car to be able to handle being in the mountains. Right. So it's the same thing when you're picking your body, when you're picking your ride. And part of that doesn't just come from, you know, where you live in the world, which we do respond to our environment. So that's part of it, where you're going to be born, you know, the country you're going to be living in. But the other part of it is your parents. And so there's this unique agreement, these karmic agreements. You know, we're dealing with three karmas, which again, karma just is cause and effect. That's all it is. It's just your work. It's your opposing force. It's the friction. It's all it is. It's all it is. Don't be scared of karma. It's all it is. Um, and so you have three karmas. We all have three karmas we're dealing with. We're dealing with our collective karma. So everything that's happening collectively to us in this timeline is part of all our collective karma. We also have our personal karma from this life and lives that we've lived before. And then we have our ancestral karma. And I know some people think of that as, oh, well, if my ancestors were slave owners, I've got to, you know, no, no, no. All of our ancestors have been slave owners. All of our ancestors have been enslaved and have been slave owners. So I'm not talking about that. 
I'm actually talking about some more subtleties that we experience within our DNA. So the Cassiopeians, again, speak about this. So within the DNA, our DNA, our living DNA, not only is our soul, our consciousness, our chi, our prana, our life force filtering through our DNA, but we are also carrying information and bits and particles of that information from our ancestors too. That's karma. So inherited karma can basically be getting cancer like your mom got it or, or you know, having digestion issues like your dad. That can be karma too, obviously. But again, I'm talking about more of the subtleties. So I'm going to use myself as an example and my boyfriend because, you know, the only person I can really use an example is myself. I'm going to say them some things my boyfriend has said as well regarding his family just to help you because I, I would love to hear about your your family too and what you've learned from from this conversation or what you think about this conversation. So when we're looking at our inheritance, like what we inherit from our parents, again, we have all this DNA from both sides of the family that is collectively coming together to form you. You know, there are some DNA traits that most definitely you're going to get and some that, you know, could could pa be passed through or could not be passed through depending on recessive and dominant genes. For me, for example, both of my parents are blue eyed. At actually every single member of both sides of my family, all blue eyed people. So because blue eyes is a recessive gene, there's no way in hell my parents were ever going to have a brown eyed kid. My sister's blue eyed. Obviously, her husband's also blue eyed. All her kids have blue eyes. Now, we could have green eyes because green eyes do come from the same gene code as blue eyes. So that's something that pulling from the DNA from both those sides of the family, obviously, I'm going to have blue eyes. The likelihood of me being blonde is high, was very high with both my parents because both sides of the family are blonde. Blonde headed people everywhere. Obviously, both my parents are white, European descent. So I was going to pop out white, right? I'm not going to pop out Asian or black because that's not in the DNA makeup of my, of, of, the, of what I'm working with, right? With, with building this body, this experience. Now, there are some other things that I might have picked up and might not have. Uh, for example, I'm O negative. That's the recessive tr trait of the rhesus negative, which is rare. My mother is RH negative. My father is not However, in order for my sister and I both to be born arch, arch negative, like our mom, having that recessive trait means that my father carried the recessive trait. So that means one of my grandparents was RH negative. All right. So do you guys, you get what I'm saying? We, we know about the Punnett square and how DNA works. You know, my dad's family, really tall. Like they're like, my dad's like six, four. My grandfather was like six, five. I've got some great aunts who are like six feet tall. My mom's family, average size. Um, I'm five, five. My sister's like five, five. My mom's like five, two. So we're a little taller than my mom, but we got the more, the body structure more of my mom's family than my dad's family. That was a toss up, right? Like, were we going to be tall or were we going to be average? I'm glad I'm average. Cause I'm a, I'm a girl. I don't think I'd want to be super tall, but you know, as far as like athletic abilities, both my sister and I are pretty athletic. Um, both my parents are athletic. Now, both my parents are relatively competitive. They did a lot of sports. I'm not competitive. My sister is more competitive than I am. I like to exercise. Obviously, you guys know that. But I do that for spiritual awakening, not to be in competition with anybody else. So we understand all this stuff, right? Then we look at things like intelligence. Most of the time, intelligence is something that is inherited. Your IQ. You know, it was a joke when I was a child because my mom's family, the Bryce's, again, Bryce is my mother's maiden name, are very famous doctors in the Southeast, especially in South Carolina. The Williams Bryce Stadium is the football stadium at the University of South Carolina, the Williams Bryce Medical School. This, these are all my, fam my family, right? They're all doctors for generations back. My grandfather, my mom's dad was like head of surgery, you know, just all doctors, doctor, 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 doctor. And it's been a joke because I popped out and I'm the bearer of the name. My, my first name is this family name. And my strengths were English and history. I knew from the time I was a child, I did not want to be a doctor. I love biology. I think it's fascinating to st study genetics, but I'm not, I don't, 
My chemistry teacher in high school used to laugh at me and be like, aren't you Boyce Bryce's granddaughter? Because I would ask questions and I'm like, yes, but I don't, it doesn't mean I understand this. So they would kind of laugh at that, that even though I'm very intelligent as well, I, 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 I know my IQ. I, I'm obviously, you know, we come, I come from intelligent people, but I wasn't following in that, that path of medicine. Now, as I started to study my dad's family more, my dad's mom, and I have a video on the Bennett's, the Benets of South Georgia, they were all lawyers. And I'm going to talk more about them too. And it was interesting because my boyfriend was like, ah, this is where you get it from. Your whole life, you only really knew your mom's family. So you were only presented with this one genetic inheritance, which was understanding science, being a doctor. But there's also this other side of your family that were attorneys lawyers, judges. And my boyfriend was like, this is where you get it from. This is where your intelligence comes from. And I kind of looked at him. He was like, Bryce, you've studied English. You studied philosophy. You like to talk about things. You get on YouTube. You teach in front of big workshops. What do you think judges and attorneys do? The same thing. And I was like, oh, you're right. Okay. So my soul used the Bennett side to create the focus of mind for me for whatever my soul needed to refine itself. Now, my mother used to tell me all the time that I my personality was a replica of my dad's mom, my grandma, which is that that's her family. She was a little weirdo just like me. She grew up in South Georgia on a dairy farm and she um again her family were all doctor or all attorneys, judges, and she ended up getting her master. She was super smart, but she was a therapist. She was a psychologist. In a time when Women didn't go to school and didn't have careers. She she did that. And so what are therapists and psychologists? They live more in the gray, right? They're like the attorneys and the judges. They don't, they're not the, the doctors of medicine. They, they, they counsel people. So they discuss things and they, they kind of live in that gray to get people to have more of a, a, a contemplative understanding of themselves. What is yoga? It's the same thing. My grandmother also believed in reincarnation. She was heavy into meditation. What do I do? So does that make sense? So, so even your intellect is a picked inheritance from one of your ancestors. You know, for me, I, I tan very easily. Like I'll be outside for five minutes and I get brown. Um, my boyfriend's not that way. Now I live in the Southeast. You could say, you know, genetically over, over generations living down here, our sun, our skin just adapted to the sun down here. You could say that. However, when I did my DNA, I realized I'm like 10% Greek. I didn't know I was, had any Greek in me. I also got some Coptic Egyptian in me. My mom laughed because my mom also gets very tan and she was like, ah, there it is. That's why we get tan ah, right there. Don't know who this ancestor was. Obviously, it was from a very long time ago, but that genetics still came through the filing cabinet of DNA when I was building this avatar for this experience. I can, I can be outside for a long, 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 long time without being affected by the sun. I'll sweat and get hot, but I'm not going to pass out like, you know, my boyfriend would probably pass out because he, he's not as accustomed to the sun as I am. So how has that served me in my life? Well, obviously, I spent a, a portion of my adult life in India. I need that in order to survive in India. Does that make sense? So your, your soul has meticulously designed this vehicle, sometimes just to get at places like India, be able to survive. But other things like your intellect, it's picked to provide you with the mental friction that you need in your refinement of your soul to have a, a, a different perspective and understanding. If I was born with the intellect of my mom's family, who are all doctors, I could have made a lucrative career being a doctor, but it wouldn't have led me to the opportunities and the experiences that I've had. It, wouldn't le it would not have led me to India. It would not have led me to a YouTube channel. It would have not, have not have led me to these breakthroughs that I've had personally in my own life, in my own spiritual practices. Does that make sense? So when we're looking at the DNA, and again, as I said in the beginning about vigilantes, and this is a, a kind of a heavy, complex topic. You know, we, we've been talking a lot on this channel for four years now about these historical people. And yes, we're not totally sure about our history, right? And I've said this before, 
I can at this point hold two different timelines, the Tartarian timeline and the, nar the official narrative in my head at both times and learn from both without knowing which one is actually accurate. The Cassiopeians basically have said there's a thousand years missing. So yes, they've lied to us about history and also yes, the official narrative happened. So there's a combination then of both of those timelines happening simultaneously. I don't really know if we're at the point to need to understand that yet, but it's, you know, again, it's it's interesting to contemplate. Even if the official narrative isn't true, there's still lessons to be learned, right? There's still something we can learn from these stories. And this is why we cover these people. And we were covering the Borgias now, as you guys know. And I love the Borgia family because they're super scandalous and juicy and interesting. But looking at the complexity of these people, yes, they did bad things, but why? And under different circumstances, would they have done things differently? So this is kind of what I'm getting I'm getting to. You know, so many people who are truthers, they're so busy pointing the finger at other people being bad because of their families that they don't realize there's three fingers pointing back at them. If every single person were to look into their family history, both sides of their family, so both your grandparents, all four of your great-grandparents, all eight of your great great grandparents and so forth that's a lot of people that make up you if everybody looks into their family history they're going to find some shady characters absolutely they're gonna find some shady people i bet most of you watching probably have freemasonry in your family line i know a lot of you do because a lot of you have emailed me so with that being said i'm gonna now again revert back to my family so both of my sides of my family have Freemasonry in them. Not my grandparents. Neither one of my grandfathers were Freemasons. My father is not a Freemason. But um, my, my great-grandfather on my mom's side, a man named Joseph Bryce, he was a doctor. I actually have the same birthday as him, so talk about a karmic connection. He was a master Mason, a 33rd degree Mason. I never knew him. He died long before I was born. Um, he, he was also a doctor. And then as I'm looking into my dad's mom's line, the Bennett's, again, the people that I probably have more of an inheritance of their intellect, um, my great-great-grandfather, Stanley Bennett, which we spoke about in the episode with um, Bobby, I'll tag that below, Stanley was a lawyer. So he's my grandmother's father's father. He was a lawyer. He also worked in politics. Um, he was responsible for bringing electricity to South Georgia. He was also a worshipful wizard at the Freemason Lodge in South Georgia. Now, again, this man, Stanley, my great great grandfather, he lived, died well before. And this is my dad's great grandfather, well before I. I was even thought of, right? His father, um, my great, great, great grandfather, so my grandmother's great grandfather, was a man named William Bennett or William Benet. His last name was French, but they said by the time this, they were saying it the English way, but it's still spelled the French way. My William. I've read some articles that Bobby has sent me. He died in like the 1800s. You know, he he's you know, lived a very long time ago. He came from an extremely wealthy family. Like some of these articles talk about the lap of luxury that he lived in. Very wealthy. That's 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 true throughout all angles of my family. Like all sides of my family, very wealthy people. And he himself was a judge. He founded Quitman, Georgia. And he was also a Freemason. So when we look at these things, so many people want to point to people who have this in their history and they want to try to destroy that person just because of something that their ancestors did. You guys also know I'm one of one of the many uh, great five times great granddaughters of Queen Victoria. Um, again, there's a lot of us. So I have a lot of these people in my family line that probably did some very dubious things. So how do we reconcile that and why is this important? 
Well, going back to the template of the law of one and the idea of DNA, when we're looking at third density, we're looking at the polarity, the opposing forces of dark and light. Now, we know that darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create. So what the darkness does is it steals from the light and it inverts it or it tries to mimic it. So a lot of the magic that's learned in these satanic organizations is actually coming from the light and being inverted. It's like if you have a knife, right? Like it's a tool. So you can use a knife to hurt somebody or you can use a knife to cut up fruit to serve somebody. It's what you do with it. Now, another difference between the darkness and the light is how they teach information. The light doesn't have secrets. The light shares information. The darkness hoards it and keeps it secret. That's why the darkness has secret societies. Now, with that being said, in the light, there is there is limitations on what people can learn and when they can learn it. For example, if you are to study traditional yoga, you're going to be basing your studies off something called the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. This is like a 5,000-year-old text. For the first 10 years of your life, you are only going to be studying the first and second pada. No teacher really is comfortable teaching the third and fourth pada. Most teachers won't teach it. Um, most people have to go to India to study the third and fourth pada. And once you're in India, you have to pretty much prove that you're ready to study the fourth, the third and fourth pada and that you're not going to use that that information for evil purposes. Because the third and fourth pot to deal with like the sithis, which are what what we call the yoga powers, which is kind of a nickname. And that's things like a heightened intuition, levitation, like that kind of stuff, being able to really manifest your your own body and to have control over your own body where the first and second pot is are more like listen you suffer because you don't know who you are let's look at the yamas and the niyamas let's look at the asana practice breathing practices and let's slowly get you prepared to understand greater concepts now with that being said even though you're if you're a beginner student to yoga the teacher is not going to teach you the third and fourth pada doesn't mean that you don't have the third and fourth pada every time you order the yoga sutras it all comes together so you got the first, second, third, fourth pada all together in one book. So you can read it. There's no secrets. Like you, you might not understand it, but they're not hiding it from you. Does that make sense? So it's like, let, let's look at like a subject like mathematics, for example. When you're really young, you first learn how to count, right? That's what you learn first is how to count. Then you learn addition and subtraction, then multiplication, then division. And then later on, you get things like algebra, geometry, calculus, trigonometry, these deeper mathematics. Now, if you're in middle school, eighth grade, and you're just learning algebra for the first time, that doesn't mean that you can't go read a calculus book. That doesn't mean that you can't go read a trigonometry book. It's there. You can read it. You might not understand it yet. Someone might not be willing to teach it to you yet because you first need to learn algebra, but it's still there. Right? So that makes, makes sense. Yeah. Like, so they're not hiding it from you. They're just saying you're not ready yet for it but it's no secret. That's there. It's right there. But then the darkness, so that what the darkness will do is they'll take third and fourth pot and they'll hide it and only teach people that they want to teach third and fourth pot to. So that's the differences. Yeah. So when we look back at our heritage, and I know a lot of you guys, as I've said, a lot of you guys have emailed me. A lot of you guys have Freemasonry in your background and you feel ashamed of it. And I'm going to tell you right now, you hold your damn head up high because whatever your ancestors did, whether it was nefarious or not, whether they were a 33rd degree master mason like my great grandfather, Dr. Joe Bryce, or they were a worshipful warlock like my great great grandfather, Stanley Bennett, doesn't matter. Whatever they did is their karma. However, in the processes of what they did, they learned something. There was some magic that they integrated into their knowing. And guess what? That information that they learned, guess where that is now? Your DNA. It gives me chill bumps. That information is in your DNA. So what are you going to do with it? Now you have access to some of that information 
within your DNA. They might have done nefarious things with that information. They might have done things that you, unscrupulous things. What they did with that information is their karma. What you do with that inherited information becomes your karma. So what are you going to do with it? So the fact that I have all these Freemasons in my lineage on both sides of my family, yeah, I could run around pissed off and ashamed, but that's just going to generate negative, dark, heavy energy for myself. Or I can sit here and say, yep, my ancestors probably did some shady shit. But I can tap into that DNA information and use it for good. Because the magic isn't what's wrong. That's just the tool. That's just the knife. I can either use it to serve fruit or hurt somebody else. A hard part, too, and we talk about this a lot. One of my um, boyfriend's teachers used to talk about this, that you, you, you can't, if you run around ashamed of your ancestors, you're just going to carry them on your back. So to find this place where I can be grateful and proud of Stanley Bennett, the worshipful warlock wizard guy, my great, great grandfather, I can be proud of what he, the good things he did that he did bring electricity to South Georgia. He was really good to his children, which in return made my great grandfather good to my grandmother, which in return made me have a really good relationship with my grandmother, who was an incredible woman. So I can be proud of them. I can acknowledge uh, the Bennett's, my grandmother's side of the family were super good looking. They were known for their looks, which is hysterical to me because my mom's mom Growing up, she was the one that everybody said, oh, she, Maxine Maxine Bryce is just the most beautiful. Oh, she's so gorgeous. Even after she died, people would come back, oh, my God, your grandmother was so beautiful. Blonde hair, blue eye, just so beautiful. So I always saw that the look department was my mom's family. But now I'm looking at the Bennetts, and I'm like, no, actually, they would, like, win beauty prizes all the time. Like, they, and I'm looking at pictures, and I'm like, the Bennetts were freaking attractive. They were tall and skinny and also blonde hair, blue eyed. And. You know, so I can look at pictures of my great great grandfather and be like, "Yeah, Stanley was quite a looker," and I thank you, I thank you for those that DNA. You know, like you know, and I can acknowledge that he was a smart man. He was an attorney. He was obviously a smart man. Thank you, Stanley, for being smart because you are smart. That means I'm smart. That means I inherited that from you. Thank you for that. I can honor that about you. I'm not so keen on what you were doing in the dark. And I'm going to say I'm not, I, I don't agree with that, but I'm going to take your DNA that's in me and I'm going to utilize it for good. Every time we drive through equipment now, I will take, my goal is to take flowers and leave it at their graves. You know, even though I know Stanley probably was doing shady shit, I'm going to go and honor him as my great grandfather and leave flowers at his grave. He's a human being. He was complex, like we're all complex. And that's the thing too, right? Because we know that when we talk about like we've done episodes on organic portals, which I'll, I'll tag that episode down below if you, if you missed that, that you know, organic portals are people who don't really have souls. But in order to polarize positive or negative, you have to have a soul. So organic portals, they're just tools used by the people polarizing negative. But in order to polarize negative, you can't be an organic portal. So a lot of these nefarious people do have souls two organic people cannot have a sold human like you you they that's the dna as well so even though they chose one path for their soul i can respectfully choose another through free will and still be very grateful for the information that i've inherited through my dna because that information was picked by my soul for this experience for a reason as was yours you know, my boyfriend, he also comes from a long lineage of dubious people, very power. Actually, funny story, my boyfriend and I share an ancestor. He lived in the 1300s, so it's not like we have no matching DNA at this point. We've matched, we've, we've diluted ourselves through the 700, over seven, 
no, 700 years, we've deluded ourselves away. And that, that shared ancestor is King Edward III. So well, the War of the Roses guy, we, we share we share that ancestor. So, um, but more importantly, my boyfriend is actually a descendant of Sir Thomas More, which I find hysterical. That guy, I mean, Sir Thomas More, I, I was telling my boyfriend, I was like, oh my God, I have such a lovely relationship with Sir Thomas More because of Utopia. I had to do big presentations on Utopia when I was in high school, not even university, like high school. That's a really heavy concept for a 17 year old kid. And um, the more, you know, because we, we, I'm a history buff and he didn't really know much about Sir Thomas More. He just knew that it was a big deal. It was in his family records. Cecil, Cecilia, Sir Thomas More's daughter, Cecilia, is the line my, my boyfriend comes from. And Sir Thomas More, I was like, to my boyfriend, I was like, dude, this guy was like a political genius. He was so smart. And he, he worked in the court for Henry VII, the first Tudor king, and Henry VIII. He was one of Henry VIII's most beloved companions and political advisors. He was brutally executed for not accepting Anne Boleyn as the new queen because he was a staunch Catholic. But nonetheless, he was a, a wheeler and a dealer. He was knighted Sir Thomas More. And I, I told my boyfriend, I goes, you know what was really cool about Sir Thomas More? Because he had all daughters, lots of daughters. He was a girl dad. His daughters were given the same education as men, which was so weird at that time. And Todd's mom's family, where it comes through, or Sir Thomas More comes through, is the same like my dad's family, where they educated their women. Todd's mom, Tom's grandma, like they all, Sir Thomas More's daughters, the women were expected to have the same level of education as the men. My grand Stanley's wife, Minnie, my great great grandmother, Minnie Hightower, in the 1800s, my grandmother's grandmother, through her, her, her father's mother, was one of the most educated women in South Georgia, like in or in the state of Georgia in general. She educated men, she went and taught the men. And then my grandmother had her masters. So it, there's, there's commonalities here, right, between the, these intellects. You know, through Cecilia, through Sir Thomas More's line on my boyfriend's side, came the knights where we have peter knight one of my boyfriend's direct descendants through cecilia through sir thomas more he was a, an explorer he was basically kind of like a pirate he, but he worked for the crown so he was on his boats exploring the caribbean he ended up kind of staying like he left england and just staying and what's interesting is even though my boyfriend has a terrible sense of direction since i've known him he is obsessed with maps, with old maps. Where do you think that comes from? I'm not obsessed with old maps. I'm really good with directions. There's not many things I'm super good at just naturally. Directions is one of them. I always know where I am. I'm very good at directions. But I, so I'm not really, I don't really need a map most of the time. My boyfriend, however, will sit there and study old maps. Like that's Peter Knight's DNA. That's where it's coming from. My boyfriend is also a huge philosopher. He loves the law of one. Where do you think that's coming from? What is Sir Thomas More? A philosopher, a lawyer, an attorney. Does that make sense? And so looking at my boyfriend's family, and of course, his three times great grandfather, a man named Jesse Knight, settled Tampa, Sarasota area. And there's plaques everywhere. You know, I always laugh and say he's the prince of Florida. Um, you know, but there is... Um, there's some dubious characters in his past as well, obviously, because he had high wheelers and dealers as his direct, he's directly, we're not talking about uncles and aunts, we're talking about direct descendants. And so he, he as well is like, you know, I can honor, I can honor these people for the good that I got from them. I don't have to be okay with any of the dubious and nefarious things they do. I have that free will choice to go in the opposite direction, to go towards the light and use the karma that I inherited, the information in my DNA, I can use that for good, for good. My boyfriend's also RH negative. He's A negative. So we're both two RH negatives. He spent a lot of time in India as well. He, he teaches, that's his service to the world. He teaches people, he helps people through these, these mystical arts. So whereas our ancestors might have been using the mystical arts for service to self, for the darkness, he and I are both choosing to use it for the light. 
to serve others. You know, part, I, I feel even though off of YouTube, that's how I make really make my living is teaching philosophy and my, my classes pack out, my workshops always pack out, my intenses pack out, I make a good living doing that. However, I feel obligated to talk about these things on YouTube for free to hopefully inspire. Again, I'm not the carrier of truth, but hopefully that inspires other people to go within themselves and find their own liberation, their moikshka, you know, find, find their salt. Find their sadhana, find their devotion, or just you know. Whereas if I was more negatively polarized, I probably would not even be talking about this on YouTube. I would be hoarding it for myself. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. And I just um I encourage you guys, like, look into your ancestry. For everybody who's emailed me, I mean, this is your business. So I'm never gonna talk about this. When you email me stuff about your personal business, I'm never gonna like talk about it on a YouTube channel that's your personal business. But if you are someone that's emailed me about your family's tango with the Freemasons and that kind of stuff, maybe don't be so ashamed of that. It is what it is. You can't do anything about that. Like that it was their choices. But you can still honor them as human beings, as complex human beings. And be grateful for having that information in your DNA. And understand that maybe your soul, just maybe, just maybe your soul knew what it was doing. Maybe your soul knew what it was doing when it concocted this ride for you. Just like a car needs gas to drive, just like a four-wheel drive is suited for Appalachia, Maybe, just maybe, if you have ancestors who were dabbling in magic for the nefarious side, maybe that information, that understanding in your DNA of the magic is something you need, just like gasoline, for you, for your soul, to do things for the light. Just maybe. Right? Take an apple, for example. An apple by itself has lots of nutrients. You can make applesauce that's nutrient, or you can take that apple and put it in, over caramel for a you know caramel apple or an apple pie. You've 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 now made it the apple something not so nutrient with the caramel and the pie crust and the sugar. However, the apple's still there though, so you've still got amongst the caramel and the pie crust you still have the apple there there's you can still e extract the nutrients of the apple so maybe seeing your ancestors who were freemasons or whatever or worse maybe you know your ancestors were for a fact i mean i don't know for a fact i just can assume safely assume if, if my grandfather was a, my great grandfather was a 33rd degree master mason and my great great grandfather was a worshipful wizardly warlock or whatever in the Freemasons, they probably were doing some pretty shady stuff. Like I can assume that safely. So I don't have proof of that, but I can assume that. So I can take just like that apple, that caramel apple, I can extract the apple, the nutrients, the good stuff from the caramel. You can extract the good information, the sacred magic of consciousness and extract that in your DNA to use that nutrients for good. Does that make sense? So I think it's super important. And again, I would be, I would be very, um, if I was a gambling person, if I was a betting woman, I would say that most people on the planet right now, we know that people that have souls on the planet, no one on the planet who has a soul is an old soul. There's no new souls on this planet right now. Not possible for what we're going through right now. The only people who can handle this planet right now are people who, old souls who've been around for a while. So we know, you know, organic por portals, different story. So we know people who have a soul, you've been around, this ain't your first rodeo. This is probably not even your 10th rodeo, right? So I can guarantee you that every soul person on this planet, whether they know it or not, logically know it or not, probably has shenanigans in their ancestral line. I, if I were a betting person, I would put money on that because that information is something you need. Your soul is smart. Your soul is a lot, your consciousness, your soul is so much smarter than your practical, logical brain. 
So I want to hear y'all's thoughts on that. And if you want it, like if, if, if you've had an epiphany, like if there's an epiphany, if you're like, oh my God, you know what? I just realized I'm super sensitive to spirits or I'm an impact to other people. And now I've realized it's because my great grandfather was a masterful war warlock wizard Mason too. And maybe that's where I get it from. So now you can take that and own it because knowledge is power. Knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite. So you can take that information for yourself, the beautiful person that you are and use it for good. Cause it's just a tool, you know, that, that the actions of your ancestors do not define you. The actions were the choices that they made. The information, though, that they learn integrated into their DNA, which passed on to you. So separate the action from the information. My friend Hillis, you guys know we're doing Mew together. He said something really spectacular one day when we were on the phone. I don't even think he realized it. We were talking. We were planning for a show. We were looking at other source information. I said, oh, God, Hillis, here's a book. Oh, we're looking online at different books about Mew. And I was like, hey, there's this book from this guy about Mew and he's a free, he's written by Freemason and Hillis was like well better read that book because if it's written by a Freemason it's probably true and I thought wow that's so enlight enlightening because even though the Freemasons are not doing the best of things doesn't mean that what they're not learning isn't true yeah so we're it, we're we're extracting the information from the action that's why it's important to study the Freemasons, because what do they know that we don't? And can we, again, extract the information from the action? The information is not the action. Hurting a child is not the information. These are two separate things. The information is just a tool. How you use it is what matters. You are responsible for your actions. So when we talk about inheriting karma, we're not talking necessarily about you having to pay the price for something your grandpa did. That's not what that means. You only have to pay the price for things you did. You did. Not what grandpa did. When we talk about inheriting karma, we're talking about the information. You might inherit diseases again, That's that, but that's part of like, Inheriting a, a disease is like inheriting blonde hair or blue eyes, right? So what I'm talking about, though, is the more theoretical stuff. Yeah, you are not responsible. Let me get let me somebody say that again for those in the back who did not hear. You are not responsible for the actions of your ancestors. Even those of you who have ancestors who did really good things. You're not responsible for that. My grandfather, I get used to get stopped all the time because my grandfather saved so many people's lives being a surgeon. That's awesome to hear. I'm so glad he did that. But that way, I didn't do that. He did that, right? It drives me crazy when people try to ride the coattails of their ancestors. Like, well, my granddad, you know, he's whatever. And therefore, that's, you know, like the Murdoch situation, the Murdoch murders. Like, no, if, if your ancestor did something good, you're also, you can be proud of them, but you're also not responsible for that. Like, you have to, you have to, Use that as an inspiration to do your own good, right? But you're also not responsible for the shitty things they did too. Yeah? So you're only responsible for yourself. Don't repeat that. If you do repeat the family trauma, then you're responsible for that. You're responsible for your actions. But just take the information. And you do you. Don't let anybody steal that sparkle. Don't let anybody tell you to be ashamed of who you are because of your last name. I laugh about Queen Victoria being my five times great grandmother all the time. I can respect the fact that she's one of my five times great. We got lots of five times great grandparents and she has tons, tons, thousands of, of descendants. And I just laugh and say, you know, at least she had a kid who had a kid who had a kid and at least the kid who had the kid decided that his kid wasn't going to be a part of this and sent that kid to Philadelphia. So I could be grateful that she at least had a kid who had a kid. And that kid said, mm -mm, my daughter's not going to live this way and sent her to Philadelphia because I get to be free now. So I could be grateful that she actually had a kid who had a kid 
I can laugh and be like, at least I'm not as short as her. At least I'm not as ugly as her, you know? But I'm grateful that she had a kid who had a kid. Because the kid who had a kid is the one that made the decision. We're not going to do this anymore. And because he made that decision, his daughter was free and was sent to Philadelphia. And she had a kid and that kid had my grandfather. My grandfather had my mother and my mother had me. Right? I hope that makes sense. And I cannot wait to hear you guys. I cannot wait to hear your family stories. Again, I only have myself to talk about, so I cannot wait to share what you want to share. And maybe part of us breaking through to fourth density is instead of being ashamed of our ancestors, we honor them for giving us life and we take the information and we use it for good. We honor what's actually in our DNA. What do y'all think? Because we can't exist without magic, right? We can't, we are magic. You're a fractal of God, that's magic. We can't exist without it. The Emerald Tablets, Thoth, every chapter is magic of this, magic of that. It's not ma He's talking about you. You're the magic. So we can't exist without it. Life is magic. I mean, have you seen this planet? It's magic. Have you seen you? Go and look at, go. I'm going to dare you to something. I want you to go and sit by a mirror and I want you to stare into your own eyes. I want you to hold yourself staring in your own eyes for at least a couple of minutes, set your alarm if you need to. Guarantee you, after those couple of minutes are over, you're gonna understand your fucking magic. You're magic. You're beautiful. You're the sparkle. You're the fractal of God. And by ignoring that, by allowing people to make you believe that everything is black and white and there's no complexity and allowing people, even your own mind to be vigilante. You're allowing people to steal that sparkle. Don't do that. That sparkle is, that's God. You're magic. You are magic. I've said for a long time, the truth or community is just as controlled by the establishment as the normie community. Because we see the vigilante attitudes coming out. We see people trying to like destroy anybody who has a particular last name or has any inheritance or ancestry in these organizations, but we all do. Riddle me that, Batman. We all do. Every single person on this earth who has a soul, I guarantee you, has at least one ancestor that was doing some shady stuff. So maybe step back for a moment and realize life doesn't exist without magic. That's God. It's miraculous. You are a miracle. And within that magic, in that miraculous you, you make the decision. You're the boss. Are you going to use what's in your DNA, the information for good or for evil? Again, the actions your ancestors took, just again, one more time to reiterate, not your responsibility. But what is your responsibility? Your miraculous soul said, ah, I'm going to take that information. Now I'm going to take what that ancestor learned and integrated through these rituals. I'm going to put it in this person's, in my own DNA. So that when I take body, I can rely on the inherited knowing and course correct for myself and use it for good. Anyway, guys, I hope that makes sense. I cannot wait to hear what, you know what I want to hear about you guys? When I, I want to hear from you. You know how, like I said, my boyfriend, one of his whatever ancestors, Peter Knight was kind of like a pirate, like an explorer. And, you know, my boyfriend like loves maps and that just, that's what, you know, connects. What is something really unique and interesting about you that you just learned comes from some distant ancestor? Like, I learned that I tan easily and I've got like 10%, I'm 10% Greek and who knew? Like nobody I know of my ancestors came from, from Greece and I've also got Coptic Egyptian. Like that was way back when, but it's coming through now. 
Like what's something about you? I really want to know what is something about, because I find this stuff so interesting. Sh please tell me something about yourself that you know you got from a specific ancestors, like ancestor like way back when. Like again, mom, my grandmother's family, all lawyers. And that's my boyfriend was like, this is why you're the way you are. You don't take after your mom's family in this respect. Like they're doctors. You don't, you don't fit that mold, but you do fit this mold over here. Let me know. I want to know. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, which mold do you fit? And where do you find power in that? And how can you use that to help other people? How can you use that side of yourself to help other people? I want to know. I find this shit so cool. I want to know. All right, you guys. Oh, I'll, I have a friend. I'll just tell you this one thing too. I have a friend. She's a black lady here and one of my really good friends here. And that's all I'll say because I know she's very private. But she's um, got some white in her from like a few like couple generations back. And she was doing some research because her hair has a red tint to it. But she's a black lady. And she was doing some research and she realized like a few generations back, she has a white ancestor who's Irish. How cool is that? Like she, and she's, she's got red, like a red tint in her hair. Like how that's obvious. And it's not that that's like a natural, it's it, obviously that's where it comes from. Like how fucking cool is that? Like, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. The way our souls create these bodies, these vehicles to express whatever it needs to express in this Shakti, this property, this nature that we're in. So I want to hear from you. Like, even if you've got an ancestor that was super notorious, like nefarious, like doing some shady shit, but what have you taken from that and learned from that to do to do good. Like I'm not talking about like, you know, if, if your ancestor was like carpooling, we'll say kids, the T word. Yeah. You could in this life now be working to help. That's a great way to counter that. It's not work to help children. But that's not necessarily what I'm talking about with this, but what is the magic? What's the subtlety? Where's that subtle response in your DNA? Do you like have an ancestor? Like, like even looking at your body, like what if, what if you're like a really fast runner, but your parents aren't like, you don't know where this comes from. Where does this come from? Is there an ancestor? Let me know. And why did your soul pick that? What is your soul using? How's your soul refining that? Let me know. I cannot wait to learn that about you. I want to learn from you guys, like your experiences. So let me know your thoughts again. Hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day. Sorry, the schedule's been kind of crazy, like with the Mystery Mondays. Hopefully there'll be a Mystery Monday this Monday. It all depends on this weekend. Again, as you guys know, my, my nephew is like going to come any minute now. My new little nephew. And I've got three. I've got a nephew and two nieces. My sister's, my sister's fourth kid. And so I am on call like to go be with them if something if my sister goes into labor so just they've got camps and stuff going on so just let me know and the three-year-old my youngest niece is super young so you know she's that definitely so may my youngest niece is definitely going to be struggling once the new baby comes because she's three herself she's still a baby herself so i'm definitely going to be i'm kind of on call so if, if it goes a few days without videos guys it's just it's craziness in our family right now but it will calm down and i can't wait to introduce you guys to my new nephew once he's here welcome to this bash crazy world little matthew boyce that's going to be his name little maddie i have a little maddie nephew now he's coming so anyway guys um hopefully there'll be a, a monday mystery but if not that's why i i'm gonna be with my family so we're gonna continue with the stigmatas because wow that's fascinating um and uh the latest one uh piadro pedro I, I i've got my notes i need to sit down i've kind of looked at his stuff yeah but he's gonna be the next one that i'm gonna cover i gotta obviously i've got to do a deep dive into him because i'm not familiar with me again a lot of the things i cover on my channel i'm, I'm already kind of familiar with the, the topic that's why i covered it because i'm interested in it but with stigmatas because i'm not catholic i didn't grow up catholic i am this is a very unfamiliar territory for me um with stigmatas so some of these especially some of these characters these stigmatics um but you guys requested this guy hardcore and I, he was on the list anyway because he's one that came up a lot and he's a more modern guy so i will do him next for you guys because you guys requested him and then we're gonna look at some of the ladies some of the ladies our ladies that got the stigmata so anyway if it's not if his episode is not up by monday it will probably be up by the next monday just depending on when my nephew decides to make his grand entrance into this world he's going to be a little cancer 
So it'll be a sweet little boy. So anyway, um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Let me know. Continue this conversation in the comment section. And I cannot wait to hear what you guys say. Please be mindful of words, though. So if you want to talk about some of these nefarious actions, just use, you know, the pretend words for certain words because it's YouTube. So anyway, guys, I will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.